As we come to this point in the development of an expository message, of an evangelistic expository message, I want us to ask the question, what is the gospel? It's essential that we understand that. If we're going to be successful in preaching an evangelistic message, we need to understand the gospel. In Greek, it's the word euangelion, from which we get our English words evangelist, evangel, and evangelical. The gospel is, broadly speaking, the whole of Scripture, or more narrowly, the gospel is the good news concerning Jesus Christ and the way of salvation. The Gospel Coalition reminds us the gospel is good news, the good news of what God has done in Jesus Christ. The Bible shows human beings, all human beings everywhere, in revolt against God and therefore under his judgment. But although God stands over against us in judgment because of our sin, quite amazingly, he stands over against us in love because he is that kind of God. And the gospel is the good news of what God in love has done in Jesus Christ, especially in Jesus' cross and resurrection to deal with our sin and to reconcile us to himself. Christ took our sin on the cross. He took the penalty, turned aside God's judgment, God's wrath, turned it away from us, and canceled the effect of sin. The brokenness of our lives he restores, the shattered relationships he can rebuild in the context of the church. The new life that we human beings find in Jesus is granted out of the sheer grace of God. It is received by faith as we repent of our sins and turn to Jesus. We confess him as Lord and we bow to him joyfully. The gospel is good news, the good news that God of what God has done in Jesus Christ. One day, one day, he will make all things new. The good news culminates in a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness, where neither sin nor any of its effects can survive, and where we enjoy the presence of God forever in the context of resurrection existence. And we announce this good news to people everywhere, entreating them with the words, be reconciled to God by repenting of sin, asking God for his mercy, and trusting in Jesus Christ. Dr. R.C. Spruill adds, and I appreciate his comment, the gospel is called the good news because it addresses the most serious problem that you and I have as human beings. And that problem is simply this. God is holy and he is just and I am not. And at the end of my life, I'm going to stand before a just and holy God and I will be judged. And I'll be judged either on the basis of my own righteousness or lack of it or the righteousness of another. The good news of the gospel is that Jesus lived a life of perfect righteousness, of perfect obedience to God, not for his own well-being, but for his people. He has done for me what I couldn't possibly do for myself. Not only has he lived that life of perfect obedience, he offered himself as a perfect sacrifice to satisfy the justice and the righteousness of God. 